what you do while trying out the TIG food recipes, please. That is so nice. Um, well, <laughs> thank you. I, I love to eat, but I think it's a balance, right? Like ah. I also... You don't want to no, hear that answer. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear like there's a magic bullet, like you eat three carrots and you're good to go. No, come on. No, 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 no. And the other part of it too is like, you've got to enjoy it. I'm not going to travel and not eat the food there that I want to try. Does that mean that every single day I'm eating French fries and ice cream because like, oh, I just have to eat it every, no. But like last night, did I go and have a really nice dinner with my best friend and who's getting married? I'm the maid of honor. So of course uh, we had to go of celebrate. Course, yeah. Um, yeah, you just, you you know, somebody might say, no, you can't do that. You have press tomorrow. Right. I also have a real life to live and <laughs> press is part of it. And so is yeah. celebrating with a friend. Like you do, you do what you do, you and whatever that means for you, wherever you find your comfort level for me, this is it. And yeah, you find, you and find I balance. think there would be nothing sadder than if you blew off your best friend's dinner because you had to look a certain way the next day to do press. That That's is pretty, pretty, that is, Pathetic. That it was, that's <laughs> no judgment really like you do. So pathetic's a really priorities. strong word. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's a skewed version of how you how you perhaps would want to live your life. And I'm happy with how things are going right now. So yeah, I don't know. That's what spanks are for. <laughs> Hello, I'm HG Tudor. We continue the analysis of the AOL interview from a number of years ago, back in 2016, involving Harry's wife. The interviewer then throws a compliment again towards Harry's wife and depending that this piece is all nice and cuddly, asking, how do you look the way you do while trying out the TIG foods? Uh, that demonstrates she's under control. It's pure positive fuel. Therefore, there's no issue with the threat to control. Harry's wife responds with a compliment. Oh, that's so nice because the interviewer is painted white. And then can't really follow up with anything as a consequence of the fact that she's almost lost for words because her narcissism causes her to revel in the receipt of the fuel once again and pausing. The fact is, the absence of substance keeps being demonstrated by these almost unnatural responses of not saying anything. It's not that big a compliment, but of course Harry's wife's narcissism always over-eggs the pudding because, wow, somebody's complimented her. That is an earth-shattering event. Let's just take a moment to drink all of that in. And therefore, that is what you see. Harry's wife quite literally pausing to savour, although she doesn't realise that that's what she's doing, She's savouring the fuel. A more evolved narcissist would continue talking, drawing in the fuel, maintaining the control, but looking less gobsmacked by the fact that somebody had paid them a compliment. She comes up with the fascinating insight of it's a balance, which then causes the interviewer to groan in response. This now is challenge fuel. Harry's wife's narcissism, of course, doesn't cause her to run over and ram the microphone up the interviewer's nose in order to assert control over her, nor does it cause her to turn to the audience and say, listen to this bitch groaning at me, who the fuck does she think she is, huh? Instead, she ploughs on by continuing to talk to assert control directly, but without doing so in a nasty manner. The facade management holds good. She moves on to explain, for instance, by way of example, that only last night she went out for a really nice dinner with her best friend. Now, of course, she could just explain. Look, I had a really good dinner last night. She doesn't say what it was. For all we know, it could have been three mung beans. But by implication, it was decent. She wasn't sat at home eating one cracker. She goes out for a decent meal, so she could explain, I went out for a decent meal and I had this, to underline the point that she does eat real food and a reasonable amount of it. Although, of course, you can see from her figure that she doesn't overindulge. Nevertheless, what she then has to drop in is her best friend's getting married. But, of course, there's more, because it can't be about the best friend who's getting married. It has to be about Harry's wife. So, I'm the maid of honour. So, she doesn't provide you just with the example of I went out and had something to eat and this is what I had to eat to reinforce the point of what she's being asked oh no I need to drop in there the fact that uh, my friend's getting married and I'm the maid of honor because I'm really important and people really like me and you all should like me and you should all think that's really good shouldn't you 
of this shameless dropping in. That's why Harry's wife eventually went on to invite the Clooney's to her wedding, because it made her look good. They'd never met her, didn't really know who the fuck she was. But for their own reasons, which we don't need to go into here, they turned up. Reese Witherspoon, of course, turned around and said, don't know her, I'm not going, exercising some sense. Now, she explains that, of course, we had to celebrate. The interviewer points out, well, some might say you can't do that. You've got press tomorrow. And, of course, the response from Harry's wife is, right, I also do have a real life to live. And then you do you. Again, these meaningful, pointless observations. And then she cracks a joke. That's what spanks are for. And she gets a laugh from that. Thus, the audience demonstrate that they're under control and that they receive, she receives fuel from it. But you can see here the question of, you're obviously trim, but you run a food blog. So how is it that you manage to deal with the two? But you get no insightful answer from her. So, for instance, she could say, well, I make all these lovely foods and I just try a little bit of it because I am prone to putting on weight. Or, no, I really enjoy my, my food, but I do eat sensibly, so I stay away from certain things and explain what they are, and I also have quite a strict ex exercise regime. And but Harry's wife's narcissism is so superficial, so wafer thin, that it can't even be bothered to bring that up. There's no substance to talk about. It's just stupid forced laughs and platitudes and there's balance and in the moment and you do you and you're enough and leadership and empowerment. All of the fridge magnet phrases and words that are just being slung around because as always there simply isn't any substance behind her. It makes for very tedious, very boring interviews not that Harry's wife sees this, and of course, I've no idea who the interviewer is. But we can learn a little more about her. Um, the, her LinkedIn profile tells us that she was the Entertainment Editorial Director for AOL from September 2015 to December 2016, and then she hosted live interviews as part of AOL Build with Harry's wife, Matt Damon, Denzel Washington, Jeremy Renner, and many others. In conjunction with the live interviews, created and launched entertainment original branded content around major celebrities and events, all derived from original interviews with stars including Simone Biles, Idris Elba, Henry Cavill, Ruth Negger and Carrie Underwood. Interviewed A-listers for original writers for AOL.com with related original video on demand. She did that for a while, then went on very briefly to be the celebrity editor at Yahoo Inc., then was a contributing writer at Refinery29, and then a contributing writer at Allure magazine, commerce producer at NBC News, commerce editor at Fatherly, and now, since May of this year, is associate director at Health, Fitness and Family. So basically, journalist stroke presenter. Not somebody that I'd come across before. I don't think someone who'd say is necessarily famous. Uh, and basically, she is there as part of this AO build to provide soft interviews, not to ask any particularly probing or difficult questions, but to allow this person to showcase themselves. So here's a brilliant opportunity to really show the best of yourself without being having any concern that you might be tripped up or caught out or made to look silly. And Harry's wife doesn't deliver. Why? Because she's very little really to share. She could talk about suits, she could talk about the TIG, but beyond that, has no meaningful insight into anything else. And it just makes out and, de and underpins her beige behaviours. We will move on, as you'll be pleased to note that the end of the interview is in sight, but next they're going to take questions from the audience, so let's see how Harry's wife fares with that. <laughs> 